In this video, I explain the details on how I was able to achieve these results. And if you are looking to achieve the same results for your images, this is the video for you. Let's jump right into it. Once I drag and drop the raw file inside of Photoshop, it's going to automatically open inside of Camera Raw. And the first problem we have right now is to balance the raw file. Now to balance this raw file, I'm just going to come to my exposure and just add a bit of exposure like this. And also, I'm going to bring down the highlights and just open up the shadow a little more like so. Now if I zoom in, I'm seeing a bit of green tints on the image. So I come to the tint and just add a little bit of purple or magenta like this. Okay. And that I'm going to do, I'll come to the temperature and just add a little bit of yellows or warm towards the temperature side like that. Alright. So these are before and after. Alright. Now I think we're good to go. Now next I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on open right here. I'm just going to open this image inside of Photoshop for us. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate my layer by pressing on Ctrl J. That is the first thing I do. I don't like working on my background layer. So after I duplicate my layer, I'm just going to zoom in and try to fix this place right here. Someone literally asked me on Instagram how I fix this hand right here. Now this is how I fix it if you are watching. I'm just going to pick my close thumb tool. Once I pick my close thumb tool, I'm going to sample from the close by area and just paint it over here like this to fill that particular place. Alright, so you can see we fit that particular place. And after that, I'm still going to sample from the close by area right here and just try to fix this place just like so. Sample and just fix it like that. Okay. Sample and just fix it just like that. Now, this time I'm going to do, I'm going to pick my remove tool and just paint on this small place right here just to remove it and click on good right here. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the remove tool again and just try and remove these parts like this and click on good. Now you can see it has removed but it's leaving some patches right here. Now to fix that patches, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick my polygonal lasso tool. I'm just going to make a selection of this part right here, just like this. And just press on Ctrl J to cut out that selection. Once I cut out that selection, I'm going to press on Ctrl T for the transform tool. And just bring it over here like this and just rotate it to fit okay so that this works now i'm going to right click and just swap it to actually fit that place right there so that this works for me and i'm going to click on okay but you can see right now it's leaving some patches but we're going to fix that now to fix that just create a stamp visible layer by pressing on ctrl shift alternate e just pick your remove tool again and just use your remove tool to try and fix those patches right there just like that and click on ok and it's just going to remove that line but we're going to be using focus separation to make it a little more smooth now for the gloves right here you can see the color right here are more brighter and this one right here are more darker now to fix that just come to your action and by the way i'm giving out all the actions i use for this video for free i'll believe the link in the shop below where you can get these actions so just click on dodge and burn right here silence dodge and burn once that dodge button open, pick your normal brush tool. Make sure you're using a white brush. If your brush is on black, just change it to white. And if it's on that color, click on this black and white icon right here to change it to default black and white. So with your white brush, just bring your flow to 2%. Open the dodge button group. And just paint your burn. Since I want to darken the color right there, just make sure burn is selected. And with your white brush, just paint on those bright parts. Just to darken it, just to make everything look even just like that so see the before and the after the before and the after the before and the after so i'm going to take my flow to three percent and just do it even more just to darken it out so you can actually take your time to do this if you want i actually take my time to do this but just take your time to do it all right so like this works on me the before and the after and that you can do you can just create a new empty layer once you create a new empty layer just sample color from a close by area and just paint it over that place. This time I'm going to take my flow to 100%. Sample color and just paint it right there. Sample color and just paint it right there. Sample color and just paint it just like that. And just change the blending from normal to color and just reduce the opacity. So the before and the after. The colors right there are looking even right now. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to merge everything I've done so far. So with this first layer selected, come to this background layer. Merge it by pressing on Ctrl E to merge everything. So you can see right now we have just one layer right here. So this is our before and after. Our before 
and uh, after. So that's how I fix this place right here. Now next I'm going to do, I'm not going to use focus separation to remove the blemishes from this image. Now I'll come back to my action, I click on focus separation. Now I have focus separation is 16 bit and 8 bit. Now to confirm if your image is 16 bit or 8 bit, all you have to do is come to your image right here, click on mode. You are going to see if your image is 16 bit or 8 bit. So you can see this image is 16 bit. So I'm going to click off. So I'm going to click on focus separation system bit right here. Now once that open, for this image right here, I'm going to use the focus separation blur radius of about 12 because I still want to keep textures on the image and at the same time, I want to make the image smooth. I'm going to click on OK. All right. Now if I want to remove the blemishes, with the high frequency layer selected, once I pick my close time tool, I'm just going to use the square bracket key to increase and decrease my blur size and just sample from a close by area and just paint over the blemishes. I want to remove just like that and it's going to remove the blemishes for me all right so alternate to sample and just paint over the blemishes you want to remove alternate to sample and paint over the blemishes you want to remove and another thing i want to share with you guys is this hair right here on the nose it's super important so if you want to remove those hairs right there you use the same method just decrease your brush size and just sample from the close by hair and just paint over the hair to remove it Although it's going to take a lot of time, but you just have to do it. You have to sacrifice time to get a good result. So you don't have to rush your retouching. Just make sure you actually take your time. I know a lot of people who are very good at retouching. The only problem they have is time. So let me go show you before and after of what we've done so far. So you can see the hair right there. This is the before and this is the after. The before and the after. Also, you can see the color right here a little bit different. Don't worry, I'm going to share with you guys how you can actually fix those color right there. And make the color look even all right so for now let's just continue removing the blemishes for this image okay so we we'll finish removing the blemishes for this image let's take a look at the before and after this is the before and the after the before and the after it's looking good already now after moving the blemishes i'm just going to use the mixer brush to smooth out the color and just make everything look smooth and make everything blend now to do that i'm going to click on this brush layer once this brush layer is selected I'll pick my mixer brush tool. With my mixer brush tool selected, I'm just going to zoom in on the image and just make sure my high frequency texture layer is turned off. So I'll click on this eye icon right here and turn it off. Now you can see we have only the colors. What I'm going to do, I'm going to be brushing my highlights separately and just brushing my shadow separately. The very important thing right here is not to mix your highlights and your shadow together. If you do that, it's just going to make your image look flat and it's not going to make the image look good. So make sure you're brushing your highlights separately and brushing your shadow separately. As well as make sure you use your square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size according to the part of the images. According to the part of the image you are actually working on. So you can use the square bracket key to increase and decrease your brush size. It's very, very important to do that. Alright, so if I want to work on the small highlights on the nose right here, I'm just going to reduce my brush size and just paint on the highlights right there alone and increase my brush size and just paint on the side of the highlights just like that. Alright, same thing for here. So basically that's what I'm going to be doing for the whole of this image. Now let me quickly paint on this part right here and just show you the before and after so you can see what that is doing to the image. Alright, so just take a look at the image and see the before and after. Alright, so you can see the image is looking smooth and we still have textures. Alright, so see the before and the after. The before and the after. So basically I'm just going to do this for the whole of this image. Alright, we are done. Now you can see the way this image is looking right now. It's looking so much better. Alright, so this is the before and the after. The before and the after. You can see the image is looking smooth. And the good thing is that we still have textures on the image. The before and the after. And what you can do for me, if you feel you are still seeing some blemishes on the image, just come to your high frequency layer right here, which is this first one. Pick your close time tool and just sample from your close by with alternate. And just paint and remove any blemishes you're still seeing on the image. Alright, so I feel it's looking good like this. Now, the problem I'm having right now is you can see this place right here looking a bit too dark around the mouth. They're looking a bit too dark. And also, this part right here looking a bit too bright. So, to fix that, I'm going to use two methods to fix that. I'm going to be using the Dodge Abon method. And also, I'm going to be using the colored method to fix that particular place right there. Now, let's start with the Dodge Abon method. All you have to do is come to your action again. After you start this action, click on Tiller's Dodge and Bond right here. Once you click on it, pick your normal brush tool. With your normal brush tool selected, if any color right here is on any color, click on this black and white icon right here to switch it to default black and white. Now, with your white brush, just change this foreground to white. Once this white is selected right here, 
just take your flow to about two percent open up the dodge bond layer or the dodge bond group rather click on the dodge because dodge is to brighten and bond is to darken so with your dodge selected just paint around the mouth like this to brighten those parts up a little bit because i feel they are looking a bit too dark so just paint on it like this just to brighten it up all right and this part right here i'm just going to darken it so just switch to your bone and just darken this part right here because i feel they are looking a bit too bright just like that okay all right so let's see the before and after this is the before and this is the after now i feel they're looking like now i feel they're looking a bit too bright so i come to the dodge and just reduce the opacity a little bit about 50 percent works for me all right now to make the color look even what you are going to do create a new empty layer and with your and with your normal brush selected take your flow back to 100 percent so press pattern to sample color from the close by area and just paint that color around the mats anywhere you want to change the color just sample it just keep sampling color around the image and just paint it on anywhere you want to fix just like that so sample color and just paint it on anywhere the color are looking a bit off or desaturated just paint colors and those particular place right there all right so i feel like this works for me i'm going to paint a little bit of color right here all right so like this works so next thing i'm going to do i'll come to my filter i come to blur i click on gaussian blur i'm just going to blur this layer right here i think about 30 works for me i'm going to click on ok now next thing i'm going to do i'm going to change the blend mode from normal to color right here like i can see it's looking so much better than it was before so this was the before it was looking a bit desaturated and this is the after you can see it's looking much more saturated right now the before and the after so i like it much better like this so i'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit like so all right now let's work on the eyes to make it look much better so first let's fix these black lines on the eyes and just make it more intense now to do that i want to create another empty layer once i create another empty layer I'm going to pick my polygonal lasso tool and just make selection of this black part of the eyes just like this all right i'll do the same thing for this other eyes i hold shift and just add to this part like this like so now with this two layer selected i'm just going to pick my normal brush tool and just sample color from this part right here or i can just use a dark color a more darker black like this and just paint on this place right here and just going to affect where there is that selection just like that so i'm going to press your ctrl d to the select and you can see the before and the after is looking more intense now what you can do just come to your blend mode and change from normal to multiply just like that to make it look more realistic and after changing the blend mode you can just come to the opacity and just reduce the opacity a little bit to make it look more realistic just like so so like this works for me so this is the before and this is the after the before and the after now for color grade this image let me just show you how you can quickly fix the hair and also i feel this nose right here under the nose right here i be distracting let me just fix that now to fix that i'll come back to my action again i click on focus separation and just use a focus separation blur radius of about seven since i want to fix only this place right here so i want to mix the color to make everything blend i'm going to hide my hair texture layer again just zoom all the way in pick my mixer brush tool and just mix this color right here just to reduce that effect there because i feel it's looking distracting and too obvious so i'm just going to mix the color right there to just make everything blend it works better for me but you can leave it if you want but like this just works better for me all right we're done so you can see this is the before and this is the after it's looking a lot more better for me the before and the after all right now let's fix the hair now to fix the hair all you have to do is create an empty layer once you create an empty layer just pick a normal brush tool once you pick a normal brush tool since the background is a solid background just sample any color and just paint it or the hair like this since it's a solid background layer just sample any color and just paint it so this is the easiest way to do this and just paint it just like that to remove those stray hair so if your background is a solid color background this is the easiest way to remove stray hair sample color alternate and just paint it on the hair you want to remove just like that very easy and super easy all right so this is the before and this is the after so color grade this image i'm not going to be using selective color so i'll come to my adjustment layer click on selective color right here while selective color open i'll come to the yellows with the science layer if i take it to this side i'm removing reds from the yellows which means i'm adding science to the yellows 
And if I take it to this side, I'm adding red to the yellow. So I'm going to add a little bit of red to the yellow just like that. All right. And also, I'm going to add a little bit of magentas to the yellow just like this. All right. And just add a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to take the blacks up like this just to add a bit of contrast. Now, next, I'm going to do, I'll come to the reds. Now, for the reds, I'm just going to add a little bit of science to the reds just like this. And also, I'm going to add a little of magenta to the reds just like this and also i'm going to take a little bit of yellows away from the reds just like this so let's see before and after of what we've done so far all right so this is the before and the after so i feel it's looking too much i'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit like so all right the before and the after it works for me so i feel this image is looking good but i feel it's looking a bit too flat now let's add depth to this image so add depth i'm going to be using dodge and bond to add depth so come to your action again, click on dodge and burn. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to be dodging the highlights and burning the shadow like that. So I'll pick my normal brush tool, change the flow to 100, opacity 100. I'm just going to draw some lines on the highlight part of the image just like this. Just to add depth to the image. Do the same thing for the lips. Do the same thing for this place right here. Do the same thing for this part right here. And also I'll come to the burn and I'll do the same thing for the shadow area just like this. Just to add more depth and dimension to the image. Alright, so that this works for me. I'll do the same thing for here like this. And I'll do the same thing for the side of the nose like this. Now what I'm going to do with this layer mask selected, I'm going to click on properties. If you can find your properties with this layer mask selected, come to your windows and just click on properties right here. And it's just going to show up for you. Now just feather it, come to your feather and just move the feather up until you feel it's looking much more better. So I feel like this works for me. Alright, now I'll come to the dodge, do the same thing for the dodge. Come to Windows, click on Properties right here, and just feather it a little bit, just like this. So I feel like this works for me. All right. So let's see the before and after. This is the before and the after. You can see we have that. We have we've added that there, but obviously it's too much. So what I'm going to do, you can either reduce the opacity, or you can either come to the Properties again and just add a bit of more feather just to make it blend. So add more feather just to blend everything. Let's see. Okay, now this works. Take it down a little bit. Okay. Let's see. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. It works for me. Alright. Now let me group everything I've done so far so you can see the before and after. Alright. Control G. This is the before and this is the after. The before and the after. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you want to learn more and understand more about retouching, check out this playlist right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.